You're listening to The Leonard Lopez Show on AM820 and 93.9 WNYC. Camp X-Ray was used to house the first detainees brought to Guantanamo on January 11, 2002, after they were captured by the U.S. military in Afghanistan. It provides the title for a new film written and directed by Peter Sattler that stars Kristen Stewart as Private Amy Cole, a young army guard, and Iranian actor Payman Mahdi as one of the prisoners. It opens tomorrow at the IFC Center in Greenwich Village and on VOD and brings Peter Sattler and Kristen Stewart to our show today. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Uh, Kristen, Amy, the character you play, hopes to escape a small town by serving a tour of duty in, in Iraq. Instead, she winds up posted as a rookie guard at Gitmo. How much of a backstory did you have to develop for her before you could comfortably play the role? Um, I think that Pete has an even more developed backstory than I do for her, um, which we talked about uh, in initial stages you know, at, at length, but then ultimately kind of... Um, I don't know. I think we sort of dev- devised this general structure of like what she'd gone through emotionally, what led her to 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 choose, you know, to to join, um, and, and to specify it and like provide details. Almost felt like um, uh, like we were treading on something really private for her, and he was really sensitive. You know, Pete was really sensitive about it. Like, uh, you know you sit with one character for so long and you try to, you know, create this person and you, you know, they become real to you. And um, so I think we both had slightly, I think we both applied our own uh, projections about what her life may have been like before she got there and kind of kept it personal. Well, we have to get some, have some sort of sense of why she has a hard time just trying to fit in uh, at the off-duty parties and, in fact, why she comes across as someone who's kind of uncomfortable in her own skin. I think it definitely has. She's got some deep-rooted childhood issues that she's trying to overcome. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the role is, you know, uh, it's such a, a, a exercise in contrast because the, the character that Kristen plays doesn't say a lot, you know, and it's, it's all, you know, in that she is a soldier, you know, so much of what happens needs to happen internally. And so to kind of develop that, you know, we had to come at it from a kind of a backwards way where we had to talk a lot about these potential backstories and kind right. of things that she maybe did in high school or maybe this or that. And so I remember we'd sit and just have a lot of bull sessions about like, what about this? Like, what was her first dance like? What was her first kiss like? You know, mm-hmm. is she a virgin? Things like that. <clears throat> and so just by exploring those, you know, and we didn't always have the same answer, but I think over time we developed enough of a sense of the character that I remember it was interesting by the end of the film. I think we both, in in a weird way of osmosis, understood who she was to the point. I remember we would be, there were a couple scenes where we would look at the the pages for the day and we'd look at a line that I'd written a year before and we'd both be like, oh, Cole would never say that. And we're like, you're right. Right. Yeah, and we would both realize instantly. But we get a sense of who she is from simple details, like the way she wears her hair. Yeah, it's little little bits of armor that clearly have, you know, uh, th- they were developed for a certain reason. We don't know what that reason is, but you feel it. You know, it's like there are there's there's damage there for sure. You just sort of wonder why and how, and it's not what the story is about. But that's you know. But what's, what's neat about I think uh, a character like that, which is why I'm drawn to them, and I think why you're so good in it, is that subtlety is great because it gives you enough to have some understanding of who this girl is, but it also allows you as a viewer to put yourself in her. You know, I can create my own backstory about. You know, exactly. why she feels this way or why she's awkward at this party or something like that. By the time she arrives, it's already been eight years since 9-11. The inmates are no longer being kept in cages as they were in the real Camp X-Ray. Um, and now I guess that's abandoned now. And uh, the jungle, I hear, is encroaching there. Uh, but you could have, could you have called this Camp Delta? <laughs> Well, we could have, um, because that's kind of technically where the film takes place, is something like Camp Delta. Um, For me, you know, Camp X-Ray just had a lot of different reasons why it struck to me more as a title. I mean, the most... Where did the name come from? Well, it was you know, from that camp, obviously. But there's a couple different reasons why I, I liked it a lot. No, I mean, why did they why call did it Camp I? X-Ray? Oh, why they call it Camp X-Ray? Well, that's part of the reason I like it, because, um, you know, in the military... Uh, they have this this lingo where it's like Alpha, you know, Bravo, Delta, and X is X-ray. Mm-hmm. And so they called it Camp X-ray because it took place in the X sector. And Camp Iguana was called Camp Iguana because it took place – it was built in the I sector. And so I love that that touch of the military lingo in there and also from a more obvious literal sense. It's just the idea of giving this camp an X-ray, you know? 
Although the prisoners are no longer kept in cages, the guards must still check on them every three minutes. Uh, why so often? Uh, well, we make the point of that in the movie. It's basically a suicide watch. Yeah. You know, we have a line in the movie where they say, you know, they, you may think your job is to keep them from leaving. You're not. You're here to keep them from dying. Kristen, during the first few minutes of the movie, detainees, uh, a detainee spits on Cole. Later, one even throws excrement on her. Those scenes must have been very difficult for you. Um, those, those weren't the scenes I, I'm that sure were... he didn't use real excrement. But... <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the toughest thing about that was tr- trying to make it feel real in this, you know, because we're with lovely people that uh, are happy to be working on a project. And, like, it, 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 you never want to feel like – you don't want to feel false. You don't want to feel like you're doing an impression of something that is, you know, t- tough tough stuff to deal with. I think I think the biggest thing for me was always making it feel like we were sort of, like, worthy of depicting – things that people have really actually gone through. Um, well, Amy uh, has hard times not only with the prisoners, but also with some of the, uh, the her um, mostly male squad mates. And I guess her only recourse is to remain as stoic as possible. Yeah, it's, it's you know, for some, it can be really difficult to serve as a woman. And, um, you know, you... you there, there are... In every walk of life, it's, like, easy for a girl to relate to that. You don't have to, you know, join the Army to realize that it's difficult to kind of, like, traverse this world as a girl. Now, why did you decide to make a woman the focus of the film? Because we tend to think of these prison guards as men. Sure. Well, there's a couple different things. When I first started doing research, I was shocked at how many women are actually guards down there. Because if you're a woman and you want to, you know if you have this desire to kind of join the army, you can't be on the front lines. You know, you have to be like an MP is a military police is one of the jobs you can have. So in my research, there's a lot of women down there. So there's some accuracy to it. Um, But also for me, it was a, again, it's, it's all about contrast. I wanted to make these two characters as far as part as possible. Mm. Um, That way, when they, when they come together at the end or, or when they have these ups and downs of this kind of really weird, awkward relationship, you know, they have this huge gulf to kind of get over. Cole has been warned. You can't, you can talk to them, but do not let any of these guys know anything about you. Do not let them get inside your head. But then she goes against protocol and strikes up this relationship of sorts with uh, a man who has been detained for almost a decade, um, Ali Amir, prisoner 471, who's played by Payman Mahdi. And some of my listeners will remember his amazing performance as the husband in the Iranian Oscar winner, A Separation. Um, had you seen that film before you started working on this? Right before, yeah. Um, Ali tells her, one of your guards here, he told me that he knows I'm innocent, but I still cannot go home. No country, no city will take me because I've been here. And then he adds, you and me, we're at war. Doesn't want you to ever forget that. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It's it's such a weird – Guantanamo Bay is such a weird place because it's warfare done on this very small, you know, banal scale. You know, it's, it's like you said, it's like they're they're – you know, they, they, these guys are so impotent down there. They're just locked in these cells, these detainees. So if they can score a victory by making one of the guards angry, if, if they can get a rise out of Kristen's character, that's like they've achieved something for the day. You if know? they can spit on you. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's the strange – and to me it's like – that's why I was interested in the movie because war in general just isn't – it's not like it was in World War II. You know, it's like we live in this very brave, different world in a post-9-11 world. Everything's very different. And so, you know, a film about the military – you know, I wanted to show one that shows how war isn't what it used to be, you know? My guests are Peter Sattler, writer-director of a new film called Camp X-Ray, and Kristen Stewart, who stars in it. Peter, you've said that this isn't a political film. How can a film about the prison at Guantanamo be anything but political on some level, especially since you open with shots of the World Trade Center towers burning, a man kneeling down to pray, being hooded and, and snatched away? You know, I think it's I think it's not political because the film doesn't try and make a political statement. It's trying to make a, a statement about people. You know, I, I wanted the film to kind of be larger than politics and not be about like the intellectual side of the question of what we should do with Guantanamo Bay, but focus on the more emotional side and the larger, you know, kind of themes about just humanity and what we are as as people. 
Well, when a, when a man, uh, a new guard, asks Cole, why do we call them detainees, not prisoners, she answers, because prisoners are subject to the terms of the Geneva Convention and detainees are not. That's a, a political issue. Well, it is a political issue, but it's also just a character stating a fact, you know. I mean, part of what we wanted to do, I think, is just – is, is approach Guantanamo in this observational sense. You know, let's just give the audience a very raw, unvarnished look and unmanipulated look. There's so much propaganda about Gitmo that when we made the film, we were very conscious to say we're not going to try and draw the audience one way or the other. Whether you're a liberal or a conservative, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's a reminder, but it's not. A, it offers no opinion. It's just sort of – it's truly objective. Well, Cole had joined the Army to find purpose and so up in a place where purpose is unclear – and when she's asked if she likes being stationed at Guantanamo Bay, she says, I don't know. It's not as black and white as they said it was going to be. So uh, in the end, uh, I suspect – have you spoken to former guards? Did they uh, express those kinds of feelings? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean you can find a lot of those feelings mostly in uh, memoirs and documentaries and things which formed the, the lion's share of the research while I was writing it. And there is a – I mean that I think was the biggest challenge in the film and Kristen talked about trying to – give an, an honor and a service to the reality of what's going on down there and to try and capture that kind of malaise or kind of the spiritual flavor of what it's like to live down there was, I think, a challenge. What was the casting process like in getting Kristen and Payman to play the leads? Uh, well, honestly, we just sent the script to Kristen and um, she read it. You know, it's it, the, the movie, it, it's one of those interesting things where once I kind of got Kristen in my head for the role, it was one of those things where it's like, God, we're never going to get Kristen, but... Luckily, we did. She read it and responded to it, and then, um, and then Payman, our casting agent, turned uh, turned us both onto that. I hadn't seen a separation either before we started doing it, and I watched it at the at the urging of our casting director. And I mean, Payman's amazing. And then once we started talking, there was just an instant chemistry between the three of us. Does so. he live outside of Iran these days? He lives all over the place. He's international. You know, he's in L.A. He's in New York right now. You know, he's just all around. Chris, and this is Peter's first film, isn't it? A bit scary with a first time director, <laughs> and especially since you hadn't been in a film. For two years, by that at that point, um, yeah, I mean, I've always, uh, I've always sort of trusted the sense that you get from a person, and um, you know, you discover very quickly that if if you're inclined to s sign up, you know, to to put in a lot of hard work and to sort of uh, subject yourself to desired pain and suffering um, to learn something and to feel something. Uh, you learn very quickly within meeting someone that that you're mo you know you're you're going to the same place you want to go to the same place and you know I liked the guy so I knew that I knew that having read the script um, and having talked to him that we 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 wanted the same things and now after a couple of years off you seem to have been really busy um, isn't clouds of Sils Maria uh, a film you did with Juliette Binoche, directed by Olivier Assayas, scheduled to open soon here. And and, and then, uh, by the way, you, uh, you did an amazing performance in that. But uh, there are a couple of other films also in the can. Um, I made a couple of movies uh, in the last two years, yeah. Um, so what Sales happened? Did you just need a, a, cup of, a little break before you returned with a vengeance? Yes. <laughs> and I think I need another one. <laughs> I've, I've expended the energy again, um, which feels great. That's like, a, you know... It's definitely where you want to be as an actor, feeling like empty. Um, so I'm going to go fill the tank back up. Well, the character in this is so totally different from the one you play in in uh, Clouds of, of Silt Marie. Uh, so uh, that's part of the fun of acting, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I find little aspects of myself within every character that I play, which is why I'm drawn to them. I never feel truly like, you know, like a character actor. There are people that genuinely step outside of themselves. Um, I, I'm not able to do that. I think that that actually is genuinely psychotic. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, I still I'm, – I'm in all of them. They're definitely – they reveal myself. They, they sort of show, show me aspects of myself I didn't really know about. That's why I really like to do it. Even when you're a teenage huntress, um, <laughs> Peter, weren't you a graphic designer? How did you come to write and direct this film? I was. I've worn many hats in my life. Uh, I'm a multi hyphenate. No, I, basically, uh, you know, I went to film school like everybody else, and then you know was trying to like you know get a movie off the ground. And so you know, I've done almost every job you can imagine on a film set, from a grip to I've spent many years as a graphic designer. It's a job I randomly fell into, but also it's like you know. 
I have a lot of interests, you know, graphic arts, music, you know, and this, this is why I love movies because they're the it's the penultimate collision of all Bring these all things together. at once. Yeah, so it's like you don't have to just restrict yourself to photography or music or sound or editing or writing or literature. It's like you put everything into one place. Yeah, you were working on a rather tight budget, I imagine. How did you find a prison that looks so much like Guantanamo? Well, it's actually interesting because uh, so America is opening up a you know they they want to have this uh, prison in Guantanamo Bay so of course they turn to an American prison contractor and say hey build us a prison down here so they're like cool we'll just build you the prison that we build in America and so the the Camp Delta facility down there resembles largely any maximum security prison you'd find in the states so we just had to find a prison we could go shoot in and we were lucky that there was one just south of L.A. which was uh, it was closed and the state owned it so we were able to shoot in there and when we got in it looked almost exactly like Guantanamo Bay. Now, it took a lot of work to get it that extra step to make sure it looked exactly like... The little details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the little details. Well, the the film gives you the sense that the guards are as much prisoners as the prisoners are. Um, what was it like walking down that hallway for so many different takes, checking in on the, on the prisoners to make sure they hadn't committed suicide? Yeah, I took a few really long walks. Um, it you know it's eerie it's uh it really slams you inside your head it's really difficult to get out it, you absolutely feel um a serious sense of isolation and contemplation that you normally wouldn't achieve you know elsewhere peter this may be the only film about guantanamo in which harry potter becomes a running theme mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm very proud of that fact yeah <laughs> You know, uh, the the Harry Potter thing is interesting because <clears throat> the approach to Guantanamo that I really wanted to take was uh, is very much about the absurdity of the place. And so, you know, we all know it as this very intense, high-pressure situation, but there's a reality to it. People in there are, you know, they're going to read books. They're going to talk about Harry Potter. They're going to complain about their chicken fingers, you know. And so for me, I really wanted to show the the absurdism of of just how absurd the place is. And so the using mundane those, minutia. Of yeah, it. yeah. And so using those touchstones and references from everyday life and seeing those pop up in an extraordinary place. That's what I'm always fascinated with. Ordinary things in extraordinary situations. So do you have another film in the works? I am writing it as I speak. Not as I speak. I'm not typing <laughs> right, right here. In this, I'm typing I was right wondering what you were writing down. Like, <laughs> jotting it down. Yeah, I'm in the middle of writing this big historical epic that's kind of crazy. And Kristen, I mentioned uh, one film you have coming out. How many films do you have coming out now? Uh, goodness. Um, are you ready for some self-promotion? <laughs> yes, <sure. laughs> What movies? Uh, my gosh. Um, uh, I did a movie called American Ultra earlier this year with Jesse Eisenberg that should be a lot of fun. It's uh, sort of um, uh, just like a broad comedy that's uh, also a bit of an action movie in just an odd setting. Um, and uh, what else have I done? Sils Maria, um, Still Alice, this movie called Anastasia. Uh, Tim Blake Nelson directed it. He's incredible. Um, you have been very busy. Yeah. And people can see this film. It opens tomorrow at the IFC Center in Greenwich Village, also on video on demand. My great thanks to Peter Sattler, who wrote and directed, and to Kristen Stewart, who stars in it. It's called Camp X-Ray. Camp X-Ray.